All right, you ready? Ready. Good, because I hit record a second ago. Perfect. Today we're going to show you how to use AI to make art for your D&D campaigns. Primarily NPCs, but if you get it close enough, you can use it for PCs too. And we'll talk about the specifics of why it's better at one of those things than the other. I'm Toby, I'm here with Harrison. Hi. And we're both dungeon masters. We say it proudly, but quietly. And this has become a pretty handy tool, I think, for NPCs. So let's look at the basic process for creating character art. The AIs we're going to use today are Mid Journey and maybe a little Dali for touch up if we want it. For example, we just made this character in Mid Journey here. And I don't think we need any more variations of her, but we could do some. Here was the previous role for her, and here's the prompt we use. Woman, 35 years old, African ancestry, brown eyes, athletic, silver armor, warrior, gothic horror setting, and dark fantasy. So this is a prompt I would use for something like Carrion Crown or Curse of Strahd or something like that. I want to create a character who looks like they live in that world. While I am going to take this over to Dali because I want to draw the top of her head, and the AI didn't do it cut her off here I want the I want the whole portrait of her Harrison's going to make some variations of her he's gonna make a whole party to go along with her of different people and go for try try a couple different ethnicities genders we want a diverse interesting looking party so we take that image that we just made mm-hmm mm -hmm. we upload an image we look for there she is skip the cropping you can see her over there on the side and we want to expand that in this case upwards so dolly is giving us some choices here we're going to choose which one of these we want i've got kind of a big plume ponytail look this one's continuing her sort of forehead circlet whatever you want to call that that's cool. I like that one. This one, she's going all the way up into a high kind of crown looking deal. Even fancier. And this one's sort of a strange little line. I'm not sure what that is into the full ponytail. I kind of like that one the best. She's got a funny little poof tail. So we'll accept that and download it. And then we're going to have that art for when we go over into our actual foundry we're using foundry vtt for for most of our campaigns these days so now i can come in here and just find her art the expanded version there we go and bring it in so then we have her portrait in here for the for this player and we also need a token so I will take her art and bring it into token stamp like you do. Get it kind of centered. Get that lovely face right there. Most of the head. This is just the way we do tokens in most of my campaigns. A lot of people do tokens very differently. And download that guy. Print it. Shoot it out here. And a token. Let's assign her a token. Voila drag that into foundry and we're done now this character exists and has this token freely available she's ready to she's ready to play and she looks great solid character so let's go back and see how Harrison's done over here with the AI a couple things so I have you two new characters and I have illustrated via a mistake <laughs> where instead of control pasting i just hit v and told it the, the, the prompt above is v and this is exemplary that mid journey will just default to white women it will just oh, yes make white women if you don't yep. ask it to do anything else mm -hmm. one of the first things we noticed about all the ai art generation is it defaults to a couple of faces there's a particular white female face and a white male face that it tends to run home to, unless you put in a lot of detail. You can get beautiful, multicultural, you know, different ethnicities of people 
you can, but you kind of have to work for it. The AI is not, not innately great at it. These actually look interesting. You've got a male 30 Japanese ancestry athletic leather armor. He's an archer and he's also in our gothic horror setting. So I like him a lot. And then we've got Scottish ancestry athletic barbarian. We're still in gothic horror though. Oh, should we be switch? I'm sorry. No, I like that. Let's stay. Let's stay. We want a whole party uh, to suit our original character here. So I'm going to take one of these that you did here and expand. Do you have a feeling about one of them in particular? I I like our top right guy. I like this. I like the stare he's given me. He's intense. So we'll ask Mid Journey for a better quality version of him. And of these four ladies, which one do we like for our female barbarian? She looks a bit young. She, I think top right, right? She's top kinda... right looks kind of scary. Yeah. So they also, as usual, Mid Journey version four, which is an alpha, cannot do different different aspect ratios, so it's cutting off the top of their heads. So we're going to expand their heads in Dali. Let's bring them in here. We're going to use the same border. Obviously, if you haven't used Token Stamp before, it has a bunch of nice default borders. You can tint the border any color you want. I'm just going with a so just such a dark purple you can't even really tell. It looks black. Only I know it's purple, and that matters. So we get him exactly where we want him here. Come into Foundry and we bring him in. Let's bring in his portrait. Cool, he looks good. Let's bring in his token. Boom, boom, boom. And we've got another character for our party and he looks, he looks rather intense. Now we're going to go back and grab one more. So she looks awesome. Look at this like face paint, this cool thing on her head. Her hair looks incredible. She's an awesome character already. And she does, in this case, need to be expanded in Dali. And let's find her. Boom, there she is. And let's expand upwards. Okay. And she is a barbarian woman gothic horror setting. Just thinking about it about it almost done okay it drew weird wispy things behind her head those are okay <laughs> okay with that now we'll just two wispy things okay uh now for some reason she has an ex she's <laughs> gathering power yeah she's getting stronger by the second okay this one her hair is standing on end in a weird way now if i didn't like this i could literally hit cancel and generate again let's see what we get but yeah that seems to be oh wow oh Okay, that's a look. Don't think anybody wants that. That almost looks like there is a crown on the back of her head. I'm kind of oh. with that. <laughs> sticks, now she looks like she has sticks in her hair. I think. Well, I definitely don't want the horns. I think maybe the crown, oddly. The crown could work. The first one, too, kind of just this looks one? like she's got steam just rising. Okay. We shall just take that one. Here we go. going to cut off her incredible glowing wispy hair for her token. Download it. Give me that. Drag it in here. And boom. She's done. Well, that's how you can use Mid Journey with the help of Dali to get a complete character portrait. Throw it into token stamp, throw it into your VTT. As you can see, it's very random. It doesn't always give you, in fact, it rarely gives you exactly what you're looking for. So if you are looking for a very specific thing, you really do probably still want to hire an actual artist. But if you are okay with a little randomness and you're willing to be persistent as you pursue through it, I've been able to make quite a lot of characters. See, this guy's for a fantasy campaign. And then I've got some cyberpunk characters, and then these are all for a Starfinder campaign. Um, these cats made my girlfriend laugh for like half an hour. And aliens, just different types of aliens with a lot of work, a lot of tinkering, a lot of tweaking, digging around on the Mid Journey forums, you can eventually get probably the characters you want. This was Mid Journey 3, could not do Catfolk. 
if you if you have any animal type characters in your campaign, Mid Journey 4 can now can now do this. It really struggled with it before. You can see the difference kind of here is Mid Journey 3. These characters I had to correct their eyes in Photoshop, but Mid Journey 4 pretty much gets it right off the bat. No need to correct. This involved a lot of correction in Photoshop. That's Mid Journey 3. And yeah, nowadays, Mid Journey 4, you pretty much just put in enough detail, be specific enough, and you'll get a usable character. And I'm using this for mainly NPCs. And I still think people will probably want to hire a commission artist for their PCs, because this is going to be kind of random. You're never going to get exactly what you want. Yeah. And you pretty much can from the commission artist. They're amazing. So. Thanks very much, and uh, good luck. Thank you.